cutting. So, so scalpels, like you think there's really sharp knives and they can cut your skin open, right? They shouldn't leave a lot of collateral damage there. But why do scars exist? Because that knife is very invasive. Even though it's sharp and they get better and better with those tools, they're very invasive and they, they, they just cut and they kill your skin, right? And so what lasers can do is they can cut a much finer cut in your skin. And so all the scarring and all that kind of stuff can go away. And they can do it much more precisely. And so that's what lasers have really enabled in medical and biomedicine, is the ability to cut uh, your skin, your eye, anything very, very efficiently without all that collateral damage that knives do. And so, it, it, and also what we, in, in part of biomedicine, you guys now have these little scopes that they can send into your body through your mouth, and they can take pictures of your intestines, your stomach, to try to see what's wrong with you. They can put them into your ears to, to take pictures of what's going on. And that's also part of photonics, even though it's not using a laser, it's doing imaging, like sending a little tiny camera into your body to take pictures, and that's pretty cool stuff, too. Um, oh, I can do it. And so, uh, everybody's went to the grocery store, right? And you're standing in front of it, and they're scanning these things across there. Does anybody know how that works? Did anybody know prior to that that was actually a laser doing all that scanning? You knew that? But if you actually look close, next time you walk over, don't, don't get yourself in trouble by getting too close. But if you look over where they're scanning your groceries, your parts, anything across, you'll see this rotating LED, red laser beam. And it's really obvious if you look at it, right? And so what, what's happening is everything has a barcode. Everybody's seen a barcode, right? What does a barcode look like? Black and white, black, white, and this random pattern of black and white strips, right? Does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Everybody gets it, right? And so... The, why, and I'm going to take a sidetrack here, so if you wear, if, you're, if it's hot outside, do you wear a black shirt or a white shirt? Black. White. Mm. White. Why do you wear a white shirt? Because black is heat. So he got exactly, because black is what we call, it absorbs everything. So it, it absorbs all light. So if you wear something black on a really hot day, it'd be much more hot, right? And so on a and so what does light do for us? Reflects the light. That's a perfect answer. Very well done. So black absorbs all light. Light reflects all light, right? And so when you think about how a barcode scanner works, it's very, very simple. You have black and white strips. So if you shoot a laser, what's, what's going to happen to the laser beam when you hit the black part? Absorb it. And what's going to happen to the laser light when you hit the white part? Reflect it. So all it's doing is as a laser and a little detector, and when it hits a black part, the detector picks up no light. And it hits a white part, it picks up light. So it can make a unique signature for every piece of fruit or lumber or anything that we want out there because it'll be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, right? So a 1 being when the light reflects, a 0 being when the light doesn't reflect. And so they can very efficiently just scan this thing across. That laser beam is rotating across this barcode really, really quickly, like a thousand times a second. And so you can very quickly just scan these barcodes get out of the grocery store really quickly. It wouldn't be very much fun doing what that guy did, right? We have to do price checks. It would literally take us hours for all the groceries required to get out of the store. And so people would get very frustrated. So people need to understand how much we have enabled in, in just this area of barcode scanning and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, robotics, right? So you look at this video. You guys ever seen this guy, this gear they've made? That can, it's walking itself all the way around. Nobody's controlling that thing, right? And so how does it know where it's going? Sensors. Sensors, right? And so they can have cameras on there, right? A camera can show you what's in front of you, correct? He's got a camera right there. It's looking at me. It's taking a video. What does a camera lack? There's no? If you look at a camera, can you tell how far something is away? If you look at a picture, do you know the mountains are 100 miles away? No, not at all. It's what we call 2D, right? It just has X and Y. You have no depth perception on it, right? And so what cameras can do a lot of really cool things, but they eventually cannot give you how far something is away. And that's where companies like where Ryan and I work and a lot of other companies around this world are developing what we call LiDAR sensors, right? If you shoot a laser beam off of something, it can, we know the speed of light, so if we can measure how far, how long it takes that light to go there and reflect back to me, I know how far something is away. So the reason this thing can do all that stuff 
is because it's actively shooting a laser beam out and saying, how far away from that wall, how far away from that wall, it says, oh, one inch, stop. Right? And then it can make a decision to open a door, can make a decision to turn, all that kind of stuff, right? And so, so lasers are what allow all these robots to do all these really cool things because they give us the third dimension, the depth, the distance, how far something is away. And so this is our new world that we're going to live in, right? Our armies are going to have these robots that are going to go out there and be the front line of defense. Uh, in, in manufacturing facilities, they're going to be the things that are doing a lot of the work. Uh, you're already seeing in McDonald's, right? You can order a burger and something to come out and dish it out to you. So robots are prevalent in our, in our society today. They do not work well without lasers, right? And that's an important takeaway. Um, and then I think it's really important to understand the iPhone is the perfect example of, can I borrow your phone for a second? Show it off. It's a perfect example of photonics in everyday society, right? There's light coming off of your screen. Right? That's photonics, correct? Um, this touch screen, they have a little bit of, uh, behind the screen there's about a thousand what we call light emitting diodes, right? So it's not just something illuminating the whole back, there's a bunch of little, they're not actually lasers, but they're really close to it behind the screen. Uh, you have Wi Fi on here, right? So we already talked about Wi Fi, it's radio waves, that's photonics. You also have the ability to make calls, right? That's going up to a satellite. So how do you make a call? You guys know how that works? Towering? I just started nodding your hand. Yeah. So what's, ha what's happening with your phone, believe it or not, is when you want to make a call, it's sending a bunch of radio waves up to a satellite, taking that, pinging it over to somebody else's phone, and you're communicating through radio waves across this satellite. It's pretty crazy, right, to think that that's happening when you just hit go on your, on your phone. Signals are going all the way up to a satellite, all the way back down to his phone and make that call. That's all photonics. And so when you look at the case that's on your phone, right, the case, the plastic case that's around your iPhone or a metal case, those are all being cut out using laser, laser cutters. We talk about the camera on your phone. Cameras, light, capturing light, making pictures, that's all photonics, right? So it's a really important uh, concept to understand that everything about a phone these days, a tablet, are all enabled by photonics. You wouldn't have anything like the video showed. You wouldn't have cell phones, you wouldn't have tablets, you wouldn't have smartphones. You wouldn't have any of that stuff without photonics, right? And so it's a pretty cool uh, uh, industry to be a part of. And the other thing that's really important to understand too is, is our internet. How does our internet work? Does anybody know? Anybody have any idea? Does anybody know what it used to be like? You guys remember the dial-up internet that used to go over your phone lines? It was really terrible. It would take an hour to just pull a picture up on your computer, right? That was the age that we grew up in. So the way it works now is, is this really cool thing called every sort of a fiber optic cable. You guys have probably heard of that, right? You see Opticom, they say fiber internet, all these types of things. Well, how does that work, right? Well, the, the really cool part about light is that if you put it inside of a fiber, it's a process that we call total internal reflection, which isn't important. But it means that light can travel hundreds and thousands of miles without being absorbed or being lost, right? And so the way our internet works is there's big fiber optic cable bundles between all the major hubs, so Seattle, Denver, everywhere, right? And so we can, we can modulate or encode the information, say our picture of a cat or something that we want to send to somebody in Seattle, right? We can encode that information onto the light transmit that light all the way down this fiber, it can go hundreds and thousands of miles without having to be amplified, and then they can decode it on the other side. That's how our internet works, is all through fiber optic cables using light. And so we wouldn't have internet today, we maybe would have internet, but we definitely wouldn't have fast internet today without photonics and fiber optic cables. So when you see the Opticom going along and they're burying fiber bundles in the ground, it's so that everybody in our valley can get really fast internet, right? Because nothing, another key takeaway, Nothing travels faster than the speed of light. Not even Superman, right? So nothing faster travels faster than the speed of light. So if you can trans transmit information on light, that's the best thing, that's the fastest that you're going to be able to do. And so all that stuff we talked about, and people often say, well, that's really cool. I have to move to Seattle or, or San Francisco to be able to do that stuff. That's not reality. In, right here in Bozeman, we have the highest per capita density of optics and photonics companies in the United States. We have over 40 companies, all these companies right here, right in Bozeman, that do all the stuff that you saw in the video, that do all the stuff that we talked about today. 
MSU developed sensors that go on satellites. They've actually launched satellites before, and we have uh, uh, sensors out there that are developed right here at MSU that are on satellites. Right. Uh, we already talked about our company that develops ladder sensors for self-driving cars. If you go sit in one of our BMWs that we have, you can sit in the back. It's got a full front-up display, and it's showing you your full three-dimensional surroundings in real time. Right? It's really, really cool stuff. And so when you sit in there, you can actually, our boss will go out, and they'll actually sit in cars and drive all the way around San Francisco without a driver. It's already happening, right? And so that's happening right here in Bozeman. A company called Bridger Photonics, they make gas sensors. And so they can fly over pipelines and find really terrible gas leaks that are really bad for us and bad for the environment. And so they have these UAVs that they built that are about this big that have the sensor on them that they can fly up, fly over these pipelines, detect any terrible gases that are for us. Um, all kinds of different stuff happening in the valley. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, Quantel laser, I think there's some slides here. Yeah, there's a couple. Um, so the Mars rover, you guys ever heard of that? It's a this vehicle that's sitting on Mars surface right now. It's going around trying to figure out how the planet's made. Will we ever be able to live there? Right. These are really important things about you know as our as our you know as we go forward in our future. You know the Earth might not always be the best place to live, and so we got to investigate other planets like Mars to figure out can we sustain life there. So this Mars rover on there right now, a Quantel Laser is one of our, our largest laser manufacturers here in Bozeman. They actually have sensors and lasers on the Mars rover that are helping do a lot of those measurements. So um, I don't quite remember what this. Oh, FLIR crystals are in this satellite. So I, I showed you these exact crystals that we showed you right here. All these guys that are made, right, grown, and, and, and polished, and, and manufactured right here in Bozeman are on all kinds of satellites orbiting the Earth, right? And so you can go over for scientific materials today as a crystal growth technician, grow these, and be making a high impact in our society. It's pretty, pretty cool that we have that opportunity. Um, this is a picture of, of when I talked to you about Blackmore and, and our, our sensors that can see uh, three-dimensional surroundings. See all the cars flying through there. See the cars coming across here, right? So now you look at that picture, you're saying, you can kind of start to see why you can drive a car with a LiDAR sensor, right? Because it's telling you, with your eyes, can you see all that at, this, at, at one time? Now you can't look there and also look over there and also look over there, right? And a lot of times people are driving in pairs, looking at their cell phone, texting, uh, driving under the influence, whatever it might be, talking to somebody. It 